keeping with the theme of showing pictures on the video, this is the CTC5 Wingate chassis. Uh, as I got it, when I pulled it out of the set, it had quite a bit of rust in various areas and, you know, had some hacked in recaps that were done poorly in general pretty rough shape. The next view, oh, there's a better view of it. You can really see uh, the condition of it. It's pretty dirty, pretty filthy. That's pretty standard, I guess, these days. Here I am starting to do some of the recapping process. Um, generally what I'll do is I'll some, I'll clip a lead on a cap that looks like it's a modern era cap like this. I'll clip it, check it. If it tests out fine, I'll leave it be. If it tests anything other than perfect, it gets replaced. I'll also replace any caps that I think are were suspect earlier replacements, i.e. they didn't use the right values or right voltages. Uh, or if it's just a really hypercritical cap where you really don't want to take any chances like uh, like the, the cap that goes across the cathode and the grid of the shunt tube. If that thing leaks at all, it'll screw up your shunt tube's function. Uh, things like that. Boost caps are always good to replace. Again, any leakage in the boost is going to stress the fly back out. Um, these caps, pretty oddball values. I got like, I think that's a 30.39 and I had some other odd ones. This is all part of the convergence assembly that's used on the uh, on the CTC5. For they had the convergence coils and pots up front so you can do all the convergence at the front of the set including the uh, the center static convergence which is kind of unusual. Most modern CRTs use permanent magnets attached around the convergence ring that you move in and out to adjust the center convergence but the CTC5 actually uses electromagnets that are controlled by pots some of these dual gang pots, I don't know if it shows it, if it's on this side or this side, I can't remember which it was, but they're 100 ohm uh, carbon, which is odd, pots that are tapped in the middle, dual gang, concentric, I mean a real pain to find pot. I was lucky I was able to get some because the ones that were in there were bad, making the center convergence very difficult. Uh, here I am, sorry for the upside down picture, restuffing some caps. Then the electrolytics, usually what I'll do is I'll cut the can off. I use what I call a bone saw, which is a reciprocating saw. Uh, a lot of people use them uh, in home work, you know, like cutting uh, around door frames and whatnot. Anyway, you cut off the can, you drill holes th through the uh, bottom, actually from the bottom up, right by the mounting points of the tabs underneath the capacitor. And you stick these caps back down, solder. That leaves all the lead dress completely unaffected. You don't have to go through the effort of removing the can. It's a real simple solution. I think I can do. I can restuff a three section can in about 10 minutes tops, which is probably faster than you can do if you could buy the uh, old school twist tab cans to put in. Uh, I think this is just showing me doing some uh, preliminary cleanup work on the, on the PC boards, exposing the caps. These are all these old wax caps, those have got to go. It's pointless to test them, they're, they're definitely bad. Uh, I think you see some of these orange ones in here. It's probably either I had started to replace or those were replaced at an earlier point. I can't remember. Those look like that might have been my work though. Next. Oh, there's a bone saw. This is the this is the item I used to cut the cans off with. I call it a bone saw. And this drill bit, this pin drill right here. Let's see if it picks pick up the mouse. Yeah. This this is what I use to drill from the bottom of the chassis up. That way you can put your holes right alongside wherever the terminals are on the bottom of the can. Including the ground slugs. You can use all four of them if you want. There's no reason to tie into just one. Just pick whatever one that makes the most convenient point and the cap will fit the best. Uh, here I'm in the process of getting the recapping done. Uh, I believe that's the horizontal board. Uh, that's the audio board. I haven't done it yet. You can see some of the cans have been done. These were pretty straightforward. I think most of them were uh, just two section cans. Uh, that's the uh, board that's on the back that couples the output from the um, the, the minus Y amps, the, the BY amp tubes to the grids of the cap, the uh, uh, grids of the uh, CRT. I actually left one cap here in 
following my theory of if it works, don't mess with it. These were uh, bad. That one checked okay, so I left it. I later on just couldn't stand the way it looked, so I replaced it anyway, even though it tested fine. Just couldn't take looking at it anymore. Uh, here I am doing the uh, audio board. I think that's the audio board. I'm sorry, that's the vertical board. Uh, getting started on the vertical board. What a mess. The wax actually dripped out of the, out of the caps, got onto the board, and made it even more of a filthy mess. Uh, that's the vertical board completely done. I think I'm getting confused on which boards I'm looking at. Let me take another look at this. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, that's the video board. You can see uh, this is the video board, video out. These are the uh, outputs to the, uh, the cathodes. You have these voltage divider resistors in here that adjust the voltage to go to each cathode for each respective color. Placed, it had a couple caps. I always replace uh, these caps in here because one of these, I think it's this, this one right here, the skinny one, is a .1. It's a video, it's a coupling cap that goes to the grid of the video out. Anytime you have a coupling cap, I would replace that regardless. Again, any leakage there upsets the bias real bad, and especially on video because if you upset the bias of the video tube, the fact that this thing is directly coupled to the cathodes of the CRT, uh, you can cut off the CRT and cause it to look dim. So this this cap leaks, this tube uh, gets cut off, and next thing you know, the CRT goes dark, and you wonder, oh, do you have to adjust the brightness? No, it's, it's this tube or this cap that's causing the problem. Let's keep going. Uh, more, okay, just some more, oh, there's, there's the audio board, I think it also has AGC, but I can't remember for sure, one of the upgrades of the uh, CTC5 Deluxe chassis, in addition to the different demodulator, was I think it added an extra IF stage to audio, here's the yoke, uh, let me see if I can make that a little bit bigger, I guess I can, there you go, the yoke on the CTC5 is, infamous for this deterioration of this plastic ring that goes around it. Um, I found a, a member on, a, on a, uh, one of the forums I, I belong to said that a certain paint lid that you can get at Home Depot would fit perfect. And sure enough, I went down to Home Depot, bought several of them. It snaps right on like it was designed for it. Even has mold and recess that seem to match. I don't know, it's a perfect fit and it's very easy to replace that deteriorating plastic. Yeah, there's another clearer picture of it. More, oh, I, I actually reused the rivets. That I just left the rivets that were in place, holding the old plastic, and just put like little X cuts in the plastic of the paint lid. Push it down. They kind of snap under the rivets, so you can use the old rivets to hold the plastic in place. That's a real tip. Uh, here's some of the early, uh, you know, early, early results. Like the videos speak for themselves. You can see I had a slight purity issue right here. Hadn't been resolved as yet. Still working on it. Uh, here's me fooling around with the high voltage, trying to get it set up right. Some current setups. Here I am getting some screenshots. Just showing different colors. And I think that's, and there's the, the end product. And there it is with the doors open. Oh, here's some attempts at cooling. I've actually, here's the, the flyback sits inside this cage. I've just, fabbed up a temporary cardboard top to it and I have a fan mounted on top of that with the hole blowing right down over the flyback. Even though this thing's current is very low, I mean it's, I think it's, it runs about 180 milliamps which is very fine for a, for a flyback current, I mean, it's well under spec. It still gets hot. If you run a two hour movie on that thing, uh, you'll get wax leakage and all kinds of bad things. The only thing I found that successfully prevents overheating a flyback if you have it on for an extended period of time, is you have to have forced air cooling. And there's probably a lot of controversy about that. I mean, my God, if, if the flyback were to catch on fire, you'd have forced uh, oxygen feeding a fire. So, you know, it's a trade-off. But I have found that by running this fan, that that uh, fly will stay, it will stay at ambient. It won't get much over ambient. If you take that fan off, that thing will hit, you know, 160 degrees and no, within a couple hours, which... You know, not good. I don't think it's good anyway. Here's some more examples of me fooling around with the fan, trying different shots. Oops, oh, it's, I'm sorry, it's me rotating the fan. <laughs> sorry, I'm going to 
plays bandwidth there. And there's a nice shot of Dorothy. You can see, uh, if I get up close, you can actually see the scan lines. Well, no, you can't. Not with the resolution on this camera. Uh, next. Oops, there I go again. That's as found. When I got it, I got it from a fellow, and unfortunately, the CRT had been necked, which is a disaster. But I happened to have an extra one, so I was able to recover it. Here's me making, um, cutting and pasting into an Excel file the uh, schematic and then the component layout. It kind of helps me keep up with what I'm doing when I'm working on a set. Uh, there's another shot of the cabinet. Here's a very early shot before I've done any convergence. This is actually with the CRT mounted in a different set as a test jig. And I think I'm back to the beginning. That's all. Thank you.